Black tea is the most consumed tea in the Western world, but also the worst brewed. In this video, how you can improve your brewing skills to get the most out of your black tea. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanno Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you are also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills and you haven't done it yet, then subscribe our channel and more videos like this will come your way very soon. And if you enjoy what you are watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Today we are speaking about black tea. If you are watching this video, you have certainly made had a bad experience with black tea. You prepare your black tea and then at the end the tea liquor was uh, quite intense, very strong, bitter, it was drying your tongue and mouth, you did something wrong. But what? Let's look together in this video what you can improve when you brew your tea. First of all, there are different methods for brewing black tea and I will show them in this video so that you can actually even prepare the same tea in different way. Let's start with the most classic and widespread method that is brewing tea in a large teapot. So what do you usually do? You take uh, your tea bags or maybe yeah, a couple of tea bags if it is a larger teapot or you have loose tea, you put uh, the loose tea in a strainer or just the tea bag inside your teapot, you boil your water in the kettle, you bring it to a boil, you put the water in, you pour the water in your pot, you wait let's say five minutes, then you remove the tea bags, you serve the tea and that's it. And that's it, you have a bitter tea. And in fact what happens is that you tend to add uh, a lemon, you add uh, sugar, you add honey, you add milk, so that you can adjust a little bit the taste. But instead of adjusting the tea, let's prepare it properly to get the most out of those tea leaves. So let's start speaking about leaf quantity. How much leaves do you want to use? Well, if it is a loose whole leaf tea, I suggest using a ratio of six grams for 500 milliliters of water. So six grams for half a liter. This is a good ratio for all black teas out there. If the leaves are chopped in small pieces or they are in a tea bag, it could be even fanning, so just tea powder, like it's common for Indian black tea, then actually you <clears throat> kind of can keep the same amount of tea. Yeah, I would keep the same amount of leaves, but you have to adjust other parameters that we will look in a second together. So now let's speak about temperature. We say usually you bring the temperature to a boil and you pour it. What happens? It happens actually that the bitter substances in the leaves dissolve more at high temperature, while aromatic substances dissolve quite well also at lower temperature. So when you use 100 degrees water, boiling water, what happens is that actually you tends to dissolve in water more bitter substances and that's one of the reasons why your tea turns to bitter. So the temperature I suggest using as a reference is 90 degrees centigrade for water. Then you can adjust it a little bit according to your taste. If you like bitter taste, a bit higher or a bit lower if you don't like it. However, if the leaves are of the large leaf variety, die jong, then you can even go higher with temperature like 95 and even 100 degrees because those leaves resist better to high temperature. However, when I say large leaf variety, that doesn't have to be confused with simply large leaves and if you are a subscriber of Nanoshan and you have been watching our videos, you know what I'm talking about and if you don't know what you are talking about then you might consider to subscribe our channel because there is a lot to learn about that. As a matter of fact, a large leaf is not necessarily a large leaf variety and actually if it's not, it could be that it's simply a leaf from uh, a summer harvest where the plants have grown larger leaves. In that case, your leaves will have even more bitter substances. Why? Because um, um, the plant actually develops bitter substances to protect itself from insects and other pests. 
so that in summer when there is more insects when there are more insects around the plant tend to produce even more bitter substances to keep those uh, enemies away so that's why not to be confused actually summer leaves is even better to reduce the temperature otherwise you develop even more bitter substances anyway this is to give you a little bit an idea about the water temperature but what about uh, the steeping time well for the steeping time you know it's hard to generalize i could generalize a little bit for leaf quantity and uh, water temperature but the steeping time really depends on the type of uh, tea you have it is somewhere between three and five minutes for sure if you have whole leaves but uh, in the case that they are chopped in small pieces or in tea bags case you have to reduce that like between 2.5 and uh, 4 minutes would be indicative if the seller provides you information on the tea pouch or on the website about their suggested steeping time follow it for the first time and then you can just adjust accordingly otherwise if you don't have any reference just start with 4 minutes or 3 minutes if it is tea bags and then adjust accordingly in the, the next time you will prepare the tea so these general rules about uh, a teapot but sometimes we do prepare actually tea just in a mug you take a large mug you put your tea bag water and so on so is it good or not so first of all it depends sometimes you have a mug and you want to put the loose leaf then if you have a strainer that goes all the way along the surface of the mug then it's kind of okay because you allow the leaves to swim to float in the water but don't put the leaves in a small strainer or in uh, this type of tea bowl that sometimes are used for that because uh, you basically constrain the leaves in a small room and in this way you prevent actually the leaves to give out substances and flavor to the water this is actually what you actually want to do and what happened that then you have to steep it longer to get all these substances out and we say that bitter substances bitter molecules that are a bit more difficult to dissolve in water start dissolving later so if you steep for a longer time then you get more bitterness out of it and more strength so say that the mug has also other disadvantages usually the mug doesn't come with the lid and not having a lid has also an influence on the taste because the water cools down while you're steeping so you cannot really keep it at 90 degrees it cools down over five minutes so all in all the mug is not a good tea vessel if you can avoid it better to avoid it say that um, we have other method actually to uh, steep in tea and again if you are one of our followers you know what i will talk about uh, very soon but before doing that actually i will show even how i do it so that you can uh, learn by watching actually i have now the water at precisely 90 degrees centigrade before uh, starting this video i already put uh, uh, some leaves uh, in uh, the guy one actually it was uh, three grams of leaves and now what i do i do a very quick rinse you see that now my tea vessel is actually very little it's not like a half a half a liter water and uh, this method that i'm using is what they use in china so they have a smaller vessel everything is pretty tiny and uh, uh, it has uh, some advantages actually with respect to the brewing in the teapot the most obvious difference is that uh, as you will see i will actually be brewing the tea multiple times and if you are asking why i'm actually now wasting the water is because i want to wake up the leaves i want also to clean them a little bit because black tea are processed leaves and starting to um starting to lose a little bit the leaves so that they can uh, quicker in the next tip dissolve uh, release their taste very sweet malty it is uh, this tea it is a uh, chin and mouth fan that i'm drinking now a classic black tea that is very good for this experiment because the one of the advantage actually of this method is that you can brew the same leaves multiple times so you will see now i will do a first brew here and let me do an example so as I told you, in the leaves there are different substances. There are substances that bring bitterness, 
other substances that are a little bit sour. There are different flavor notes, different type of molecule that bring sweetness, not only sugar, but also uh, starches and so on. Uh, so what happens? It happens that uh, uh, these substances develop at different rates and different uh, uh, time with respect uh, to uh, the steeping time, of course, and also the brewing temperature. So let's make an example, and I think this one would, uh, uh, would be actually a good example for it. Usually you have very sweet and floral substances that dissolve very quickly, at the very beginning. Then, later on, you will have more bitter substances that come out and then bring strength to the cup. At the very end, when the tea starts becoming a little bit weaker, you have a complex molecule like uh, starches that uh, start this breaking down and dissolving in the, in the water that bring a second sweetness. Now, to experience all these steps, uh, you need, uh, you need to do multiple steeping because if you steep it only once in the teapot you have to mix everything and you will certainly, for example, not be able to taste and enjoy that last sweetness that comes at the very end of the steeping because that will be completely covered by the strength of all that has been dissolved previously. So for example, in this cup, uh, this, uh, I steep it a bit longer the first because it is very, very um, tightly rolled, so I want really to release, to loosen the leaves. And I instantly lemon. That's the first thing that I thought. At the, at the palate, lemon. There is no lemon, of course, in this uh, tea. It's just the leaves themselves. So it has a certain, not certain, uh, certain fruitness. Is light, light in the mouth extremely aromatic, very light, very pleasant, no bitterness, um, sweet and with this fruity citrus note and on top of it also some florality. And this is just actually the first steeping. Now, I told you before that uh, um, just before starting the video, I put uh, um, some the leaves, uh, I weighted the leaves, I weighted about three grams. And uh, after having done that, I put the leaves in the guy one. Now, how much leaves should you use? I'm using now about three grams, as said, but there are different approaches. I made a dedicated video actually that explain uh, the difference between uh, different approaches in terms of leaf quantity and how to deal with it. So you want to have a look at that if you're interested in the topic. And if you want even some more basic knowledge about the difference between gongfu cha, which is this steeping method, and the classic Western style method in the teapot, there is another video uh, in which we did actually a comparison one to one between the two methods so that you can have a better idea. So if again the seller, the shop, give you some indication about uh, the, um, the steeping time, then just follow it before, um, yeah, before inventing yourself and then you can adapt in later, uh, in later tea sessions. While uh, if uh, he doesn't provide you any information at all and you really don't know where to start, then, well, I suggest, of course, always using the same uh, amount, uh, the same water temperature, we say 90 degrees, then, then you want to um, maybe start from a first steeping at about 45 seconds, if you use three grams of leaves, and uh, uh, then you can make a second steeping at 60 seconds and a third one at 90 seconds. I say, this is like, an example is a good starting point, but then you have to adjust uh, accordingly. I will now throw away this tea, just I want to see how the second steeping is developing and then it's time to drink everything while I'm going. So if you put in the guy one, let's say almost double the quantity, let's say that you put five grams of leaves, then you can do of course more steeping, but you have to do them shorter. So again, if you don't have a reference, you can use uh, um, 20 seconds for the first and for the second, then you can use, um, let's say, 60 seconds for the third and for the fourth, and then for the final 190 seconds. And that's not the end. If you want, you can continue as long as it is, there is taste. 
there is no reason why not you should not continue drinking your tea so now let's see how it is this tech this uh, other brew i haven't really paid attention before about the color uh, maybe you did this could be a little bit darker chim and mouthen that is the tea that i'm drinking now is also famous for having a kind of a little bit of a lighter color with respect to other teas and i want to see what happens now to the taste i will let cool it a little bit down so that i can more appreciate the taste this is something that i suggested to do uh, you as well at home very different so i i was really watching for this citrus note i cannot really spot them maybe a tiny bit there is more of a pungent bite to it then yeah slightly more strength and uh, the flavor became more um there is more maltiness and a tiny bit of honey in it dark honey so it's kind of changing the taste uh, is uh, uh, more intense it doesn't have any more so strong floral and fruity notes but uh, those notes may be transformed in something more uh, still flavorful but that more and more is in the direction of uh, dark honey yeah there is a tiny bit of, of uh, lemon lemon skin maybe but not that much while i do the last steeping and i said i have only three grams um so i'm doing just three steeping you can get you can go for even more than that but i want to do a final steep i won't be able in this steep most probably to really spot that starchy sweetness that comes at the end for that that would be probably a fourth and a fifth steep needed but i can tell you as soon as you have removed all those substances that have this bitterness and intensity you always have a certain portion of uh, more complex molecule that dissolve and that brings again a final sweetness at the end so let's speak about Ishin teapot for those of you that are familiar with the topic Ishin teapot like uh, for example uh, this one here are a particular type of clay there are many videos on our website about Ishin teapot if you're not don't know what I'm talking about just have a look usually they are smaller than the classic Western teapot and the question is can you use an Asian teapot also with black tea so and which type because this one is kind of sand color sand uh, yellow kind of but there are also different type of clays so according to my experience I have two suggestions for you one is to use a, a zini zini is a purple clay uh, which actually is, is a, a dark brown color of high density and high quality if the black tea is particularly aromatic this i would say would be a good example but for example another one is fenching Honcha from yunnan extremely floral and i have seen that in use also in ishing itself because you know ishing teapot ishi Ishing is the name of a place and actually the most famous tea produced in Ishing is a black tea Ishing on Ishing on cha so uh, if uh, locally they produce black tea of course they will use also usually Ishing teapot for brewing it so definitely black tea is suitable for Ishing teapot and I say go for a high intensity uh, zini although the bad side of it is that high density zini is rare and very expensive that's the drawback or if you have um, a largely variety black tea or black tea that are that have more strength and intensity more body and then in that case i suggest using uh, duanni like this one and the best duanni for that is uh, uh, a duanni with a large opening and a flat shape so that uh, uh, more surface of the pot is in contact with the water you know that if the pot is almost a sphere that's actually the minimum surface of contact with the water but if you have a flat surface you actually expose more clay to the to the water and that clay the duanni 
uh, smooth down a little bit the edges of the very strong black tea it brings a tiny bit of minerality as well I've seen very good results with Duanni so I definitely suggest you to uh, try it out this cup is still very similar to the previous one but um, I would say now the citrus is completely gone there is more of a warm neutral taste in it a tiny bit of uh, cookies <laughs> yes that uh, reminds me more of the sweetness of cookies actually and a fair amount of pleasant bitterness to it let's see we don't have a lot of time today if I would continue I would get that starchy sweetness at the end try yourself at home steep your black tea as long as it can go and let me know if at the end you get this uh, kind of return of sweetness in the cup not to be confused with the hooligan thanks a lot for watching I hope you have enjoyed this video if you want more video about brewing skills let me know in the comments below and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and by doing that you will learn a lot about uh, gong fu cha about ishin teapot about brewing skills and more and more and more tea content thanks a lot if you enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up and i will see you at the next one bye bye guys